Hello everyone, I'm Maricela Sanchez, Associate Director of Admissions at Chicago Cat. Welcome to the advice from first year law students webinar. I will be your moderator for today's webinar. I'm joined today by a great group of law, first year law students, Penny Driver, Jack Duffley, Jake Levin, and Sofia Valdivia. To begin, to begin today's presentation, I'm gonna start off by sharing some background about our panelists, beginning with Penny Driver. Penny earned her BA in entrepreneurship with a global under, understanding certificate from St. Edwards University in Austin, Texas in 2016. She's pursuing intellectual property in the entertainment law field with a public interest certificate. She's also interested in applying for the European Law LLM program, which allows Chicago Penn students to spend their third year at Paris University in France and earn a JD from Chicago Kent and LLM from Paris too. Jack Duffley. Jack graduated from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign in May of 2018 with a degree in economics and history. He is currently working full-time at Draper and Kramer in property management and is enrolled in the part-time evening division at Chicago Kent as an honors scholar. He hopes to use his law degree to enhance his career in commercial real estate and eventually lead sustainable large-scale real estate developments nationwide. Jake Levin. Jake is from Atlanta, Georgia. He graduated from the University of Alabama in 2016 with a major in, in communication studies and criminal justice. After graduation, before attending law school, he worked in the sales industry as a national account manager at Coyote Logistics. Jake is interested in pursuing a career in environmental law and as a 1L, he serves as an associate editor for the Journal of Environmental and Energy Law, a representative for the Student Bar Association and the Envi Environmental Law Society. Sophia Valdivia. Sophia graduated from Butler University in 2015 with a major in strategic communications. Gra after graduation, she worked as an account executive for a Chicago public affairs firm for three years. Before attending law school at Chicago Kent, she and she and before attending law school in Chicago Kent. At Chicago Kent, she enjoys being a member of the Hispanic Latino Law Associ Student Association, as well as a student bar association and student alumni board. Now that I've given some background about our panelists, I'm gonna turn the floor over to them, where I will begin asking them a few questions about their experience in the law admissions process, insights, insights to their first year law school experience. After that, we will, we will use the remaining time for your questions. Hi everybody, I'm Sophia. Hey, I'm Jake. I'm Jack. And I'm Penny. Great, thank you for all being here today to share your insights. So the first big question we have for you today is, what did you find most helpful in preparing for the LSAT? Penny? I'll start. <laughs> um, so what I found very helpful was having a tutor. So I took the LSAT twice and the second time around I got a tutor and I felt like that was very beneficial because I was able to go through the lessons but then I had like one-on-one -on -one interactions to get a further understanding of the processes that I didn't completely understand. So meeting with them along with the lessons really helped me increase my score. I think uh, I'm a little bit different than Penny's approach. I pretty much just spammed practice tests. I didn't actually use a tutor or a third party um, test prep company. Um, and it was, it, it's a little bit slower at the beginning, but um, ultimately it helped me find kind of my weaknesses with the tests and also figure out some of the tricks that helped me personally. Um, and I think the best way for uh, my LSAT prep strategy was to just take as many practice tests as I could, um, tracking my progress as I went along, and then focusing on the sections that were giving me the most trouble um, in between taking actual tests. Um, it can be pretty exhausting, um, but as long as you have a discipline and regimen in whatever you're doing with the LSAT um, and prepping for it, that's going to be your key to success. And if that means starting with a third party uh, system, that helps some people and for others it may be more of the independent route kind of like I did. Both can be very effective, but you just kind of have to find what works for you and stick to it. Yeah, I'm very similar to Penny. Um, I did a third party test prep company. Um, and then I took it again and studied independently and did a lot of practice tests, and I found that to be really helpful. So 
Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit similar to Jake. So I started studying on my own, but as you saw in my bio, I was working while studying for the LSAT, and I found that it was really hard for me to keep myself focused and on track, um, balancing my work. So I took a class, and I loved it because I I'm really good at bouncing off of other people's ideas and hearing what other people were struggling with. So the class atmosphere worked really well for me. Actually, I want to mention something about that, Sophia. Um, uh, towards the end of my test prep, I was actually doing an internship. Uh, it's because I was practicing um, for the June LSAT. So after the semester ended, it was in May, and I started working full time, similar to uh, uh, Sophia's situation. Um, and it is very hard to stay disciplined when you're doing stuff during the day. Um, so you have to find time, obviously, after work, maybe during lunch hours. Um, it can be kind of hard for that month up before the test, but you really got to stick to it so you, can, so you don't lose the progress that you've made in the months before. Great. So how did you research law schools and decide where to apply? Yeah, so I, like I said, I worked in Chicago. I really knew I wanted to go to school in Chicago. For me, it was really important. Uh, I, I thought that going to school in the city uh, it would really help with networking, uh, which is a huge part of when you're starting to start your career, is getting to know as many people as you can uh, in your field. So I just uh, I started looking at all Chicago law schools, um, and I, so it was a little bit simpler process for me, but I don't know if anybody else is looking all over. Yeah, I'm from Atlanta, so uh, not from Chicago, mm -hmm. so I was looking all over the place, and I looked at programs that I was interested in. So. Uh, in my bio, says I'm interested in environmental law, so I was looking at environmental law programs. I was looking at schools that will set me up for the best uh, opportunity for success and that has programs and certificates and things that I could get involved in. Um, and I was looking for a big law city. And uh, this is a really great city. Chicago is a great legal market, and that was really important to me in establishing a career for myself. Was where can I mer? You know, where can I go where I can set myself up the best for success? So. Similar to you, Jake, uh, my decision was mostly career-centric. Um, I'm in the part-time program, so I was actually looking for work immediately after uh, when I graduated undergrad, uh, actually this last spring. Um, so I wanted to have a law school where I could keep my job in the city and then also be able to, to attend it at, at night. And Chicago has plenty of opportunities and all sorts of different um, and all sorts of different career paths and. Uh, Chicago can actually has a particularly good location right next to Union Station in Ogilvy, so that helps quite a bit as well. Unlike most of the other uh, law schools, which aren't as close, um, it, it has the premier uh, transit spot, I should say. Super um, close to the L2, because yeah. I live up in uh, Wrigley, and it's really nice to be able to come down here, really accessible as well. Yeah. So, it's, so it's a very logistically strong school, um, it, it, particularly in Chicago. So. Like Jake, as I was saying, it was very career centric for me, and so far, so good. Yeah. Uh, mine's pretty much the same as Jake's. Uh, I pretty much just chose a school that I thought was going to help me in the entertainment law field. And also, I wanted to come back home, so that was interesting. But I did apply to like a lot of different schools all over the United States. Yeah. I do want to say, because I'm kind of bouncing off what you guys were saying, is that um, I. Again, like I said, I knew I wanted Chicago. So I actually had the opportunity to talk to a lot of people that have already been working downtown um, and were already lawyers. And they just had so many great things to say about Chicago, Kent. So I think it's if you have the opportunity to talk to other people, um, that's great too. Sometimes you can't, but um, if anyone is deciding still, uh, Chicago Kent has a really good reputation around the city. Great. So Jack, you mentioned that you're an evening student. Could you share with um, our viewers like a typical schedule, what sure. that looks like? Um, well, I'll make a quick shameless plug. I actually uh, wrote a blog article at my blog, jackduffley.com, um, and I wrote about kind of like a typical day because it's kind of hard to find some resources on the, the life of an evening student. Um, but I guess my typical day is, uh, in short, I have to be very disciplined with my time because I don't have a ton of free time left um, when I'm all said and done with working class. Um, but typically I'll get up around 6.45, we'll go to work, um, we'll leave the house at about 8. Um, I'll try to get a little bit of work done before that. I'll be at work from 9 to 5 and uh, thankfully my employer is pretty um, 
consistent with the nine to five schedule. So it's, I know some careers aren't necessarily like that. Well, thankfully mine is, um, which allows me to get to class by six on most week, uh, weeknights, which can go as late as 9.25. So it's six to 9.25 is class. Um, and then after that, I got to head home and I try to get to bed by 11 and do it all over again for the rest of the week. Weekends, uh, thankfully there's no class on weekends or work, but it's filled with um, uh, mostly working on assignments. Um, and then it's not that I don't have any time, but a lot of it has to be devoted towards homework because I really just don't have time during the week. Um, so if you're willing to make that sort of sacrifice, um, it's definitely a great opportunity because I don't have to sacrifice like a, the salary I would be making, um, which does help. Um, although it, it definitely isn't for everyone, but it, it's definitely something that everyone should uh, at least consider when you're uh, applying to law schools, especially in a city like Chicago, which has so many opportunities. Great, Jack. How about you, Sophia? What would you say? What does your, your day look like? What's your schedule look like yeah, for the day? So my schedule, so, and I, I do want to say, so in terms, it's a little bit different because as Jack, as an evening student, he is taking one less class than I am. So uh, that's, it, that does help. If you're Thankfully. Doing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so my schedule is a little uh, crazier in the sense that I have an extra class. Um, so I, since I came from work, I try to keep my schedule as nine to five-ish as possible. Obviously, that doesn't always happen, um, but it definitely, you know, can be done. Um, so I will go to class. I end class. Um, my my classes are all lumped together in the morning. Not everybody is like that. Mine just happen to be. Um, I'll end around three. I'll study here until around five or six. Um, then probably go to the gym or, you know, I try, um, <laughs> or, or uh, go home, uh, take, take a little breather, uh, depending on how loaded my schedule is, I might study for another hour or two um, that night. Uh, and then on the weekend, I really, uh, you know, you are putting, I'll, I'll pick probably either Saturday or Sunday that I'm really honing down and doing some work. Um, it's really it's really a mixed bag. It depends how much homework you have. Uh, there is like in the middle of the semester, you feel like you have more of a, a hold on things and it does calm down. Um, and then obviously right now it's finals week, so our, we're getting ready for finals. So my schedule is a little crazier, but um, it is it is like a nice, I can you know kind of work it out like a, like a job. Sense. And actually to that point, uh, as Sophia was saying, it does kind of go in waves mm -hmm. um, at least I think that's how it's designed in your first year of law school yeah. is at the beginning it, it's quite doable and you might get a little bit of a false sense of security. I don't know if that's the point, but um, it does tend to happen and you just got to be ready um, with a good schedule because it, the work does come and it can get pretty stressful at times, but that's the point. They're testing you during this first year uh, to make sure that one, you're cut out for it and also so that they can kind of compare um, your productivity to, to other students. Um, by the end of the year, and then you really can get a good grasp on how, how law school is doing for you. Jake, what would you say, Jake? What, are, what does your day look like? Yeah, so I'm in a different section than everybody here. Uh, I have a night class. I have criminal law at 6 p.m. on Monday and Wednesday, so um, I have more breaks in my schedule, so it allows me to go to the library or um, go grab coffee and go study somewhere else, but uh, the majority of my days are spent pretty much studying. Um, Kind of when I get home, I kind of do what Sophia does. I go to the gym, I take care of myself. Um, over the weekends, I make sure to kind of uh, have some time to watch like, football or, you know, just relax for a little bit and take my mind off of school. It's, I mean, it's a lot. We're doing a lot here, um, but it's awesome and it's really cool work. But uh, it's good to just kind of relax and uh, take a break for a second and step away from it all. So uh, I always just make sure to schedule time for myself. But uh, a lot of work and um, during classes, just make sure that you're uh, paying attention, staying on top of your work. Um, yeah, same as everybody else. Penny. Um, so I try to keep to the same schedule like Sophia. I try to do it like a nine to five because I do start early in the morning and I end early. So for me, like the, I was able to do my work study right after I was finished with classes every day, which is really nice because then I'm still done before five. So I still have time to like study and everything. And then my weekends are a little more open. So that gives me time to do like the volunteer work that I want to do. Great. So do you have any advice for prospective students as they navigate the application process? What comes to mind as you think about? I'll go. Um, 
uh, definitely tracking both dates and also any offers you might get, um, depending on how many schools you apply to, of course. Um, I, I apply to, I think, about six or seven schools, um, most of them in Chicago, actually all of them in Illinois, so my default most in Chicago. Um, and it can be easy to miss a date, whether it be for the application or if there's a supplement to the application or if there's some sort of interview process, it can be easy to miss those deadlines. So I found it pretty easy just to put together a spreadsheet with each school, all the uh, all the important deadlines, and then if I did end up getting an offer, I'd put that there. Um, getting a little more technical, I'd put like the tuition next to it, and then Ultimately, you do end up getting a good amount of scholarship money, even if you're not, say, top of the class. It's, a lot of schools are pretty generous with scholarships. Um, so I would take the base tuition, subtract the scholarship, and then kind of compare what each school would cost at the end, um, hopefully when I'd have multiple offers. Um, but it depends on how many, again, it depends on how many schools you apply to, because um, applications can get expensive. So just do brace yourself for that. And on um to tack on to that, um, this application process really helped me branch out a little bit because when I was an undergrad, I didn't think about this, but you should really reach out to the schools ahead of time and see if they're willing to waive your application fee because a lot of schools, if you go to like the LSAT forums or anything like that, they will uh, give you like a card to waive the fees, but sometimes you could just call or email someone and they'll also just send you like a waiver for the fee. Yeah. And, yeah. and definitely ask questions to the yeah. admission staffs especially the schools that you really want to go to. Yeah. Uh, if you can if you can get to know some of the faculty that could very well help you on the actual application. Um, for example, if you got to sit down with a professor, with a professor at whatever school that you want to apply to, um, and you can kind of name drop them on some sort of supplement essay or just talk about them with the admissions staff. It really shows that you care about the school you're applying to, which is something that any admissions uh, council is going to value. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think um, to look at a different gear too with the applications, um, for me, essay was really important. Um, and the nice thing about law schools is that they all, I think I, I gave the same essay for all of them because it, it's all like, it's like a common application. Um, so really take your time, polish through it. I have, I have friends read it, um, you know, people, especially people that know me because it was, you're talking about personal things and People that are close to you really know your story. Um, so it was really nice for them to look at it, tell me not only just grammar things or this or that, but just like, hey, I know what you were trying to say here, but it's not coming across. Um, I think that was really important. And kind of jumping off of Jack, like uh, essays and things like that, the opportunity to give your personality to the school is important because I know that I definitely wasn't um, top, top of my class, and I think that my essay is really what helped me a lot with my scholarship opportunities. So it's really, don't don't glance over that. It's really important, and just think of it as, you know, especially some schools don't do interviews, so think of it as this is your opportunity to tell them a little bit about you. If, if yeah. a, a pessimist once told me that <laughs> the any personal statement really from a grad school can really only hurt you, so make sure it's polished because a mistake can only look bad. Yep. Um, it shows that it might show that you don't care as much, or at least aren't careful enough yep. um, to really like Sophia was saying. Really take it seriously. Have multiple people look at it, um, and even people you don't know, if you take it to like a, a writing, uh, uh, like a, uh, a writer's workshop of some of some sort, where you have like a, some neutral person read it, that can help a lot as well. Okay, great. And now we'd like to open the floor for your questions. Okay, please, please use the questions box in the webinar software to submit your questions for the panel. I'm gonna give you all a couple minutes to kind of do that at this time. So the first question, the application process can be very overwhelming. How did you manage all the information you were receiving? Like from schools or? Yes, okay. Um, I, I really, it was a lot of, for me, 
taking a lot of tours. So if I was really interested in a school, it was really making sure I made that time to go and talk to them in person. So we kind of touched on that earlier, but I think, you know, there are so many tools, so many things that you, you know, selections that you could make. I think it's really important to take that time to visit personally. Something I did was uh, I messaged students on LinkedIn actually and set up like meetings with them. Like when I would tour the schools, I'd be like, hey, I'm a prospective student. I'm really interested in coming here. So I'm interested. In, would you mind grabbing a coffee with me? Ten, like nine times out of ten, like students are very open to grabbing coffee and chatting real quick. So That's definitely cool. recommend just reaching out to some students. They'll give you some feedback for sure. And if you're not as as um, like you know outgoing as Jake, I definitely when I was at the school talked to my tour guide, talked to you know, and I would say what kind of law I was interested in, and they always were really great at connecting me with students I could talk to in the future. Yeah. Great. So what was your biggest surprise your first year? <laughs> um, I, I'll go. Uh, I'll go. Um, so, I, so I came into law school knowing that there was going to be a lot of work, and I was like, yeah, it's a lot. Everybody tells you it's a lot of reading, it's a lot of reading, and I was under the impression it was like, 50 pages for one class, 50 pages for another class. It was like a lot of like actual material when it's actually not. It's more like 12 to 15 pages or like 20 to 25 pages of like very dense material that like takes you a long time to read because you actually have to be able to sit there and process what you're reading and like pick the rules out of the cases and actually figure out what the point of reading the case is. So that was a big surprise. I thought it was going to be more actual reading than like shorter reading that still takes like you know four hours to get through I, I, that was crazy to me so to touch on that i think it's our time management yeah. like we thought we knew what time management was <laughs> but really when you get here you're like okay well i thought i had a lot of yeah. an hour or two for this but really it took me like four yeah so just adjust your time management yeah and, well, with that this isn't really personal to me but just in the evening section specifically, there's parents in there. There's people with kids who will also have jobs and then will come to class yeah. and they're managing. Yeah. So if they can do it, then I'm you confident can I can. Yeah. I don't have kids yet, I think. You can do it. <laughs> so do it. it's very, very helpful yeah. um, and uh, really inspiring that uh, they can get through, They if they can get through law school with their, their schedule, then yeah. you certainly can too. <laughs> Okay, so how did you go about studying for your classes? Do you study on your own or do you meet with study groups? Yeah, so that's actually, um, I personally, I really need to grasp the material on my own um, once in a while. And now that it's finals time, yeah. now is the time I'm definitely meeting with students um, and talking together. I felt like a lot of my professors, I got enough out of the class discussion that I didn't need to continue it outside um, just because I really want to take the time to focus myself. I think the best thing in, in my opinion is um, law school, which I, I did not know this because I'm the first in my uh, family to go to law school. Um, I thought it was really learning this is what the law is and for Illinois or wherever and this is like, you know, memorizing things like that. It's not. It's looking. It's looking at cases and looking at how judges came to their decision yeah. and what the arguments were on both sides. Um, and you'll learn, you know, how to case brief and all of that. To me, that was really helpful. Yeah. Um, and I really want to do all that stuff on my own. Um, and now I find studying with students is really helpful. And I use. Um, I also meet with my professors. So professors usually have like open office hours or if you just email them or anything like that, they'll be willing to meet with you. But specifically, like me and my contracts professor, we meet every Friday and I like take down notes while we're sitting in class having class discussion and then I'll go to her on Friday with those questions and she'll answer them. Nice. Yeah. I'm gonna say, uh, okay. Well, I was just gonna mention, um, so, um, I have a someone that's asking about the difference between uh, or writing a diversity statement versus a personal statement uh, and the difference and any recommendations you would make. Um, so. Yeah, so that that's a great question because I had a hard time with that too. Um, I think for my diversity statement, I really was just focusing on the one thing that makes what I thought made me diverse. Um, 
in terms. So for me, I talked about I'm biracial. So I talked about, um, you know, what it's like coming from a family with, you know, Mexican and Haitian. Um, but I, my personal statement, I really focused on why I wanted to be a lawyer. And I talked a lot about my past experience um, and work. So I know sometimes it really does intermingle. Um, and I guess it's just really about pinpointing um, the diversity statement, just bring extracting some of those things out a little bit more. Hopefully that kind of helps. And just a side note along with statements, there's also this thing called an addendum. Um, yeah. for people who have a discrepancy within their LSAT scores. So that's really important to write as well if you have a big gap in between your scores or if you took your exam before you didn't increase as much or you went below, then you would also have to explain those as well. To Sophia's point on the personal statement, um, do be sure to somewhere along the line say why you're going to law school. It doesn't have to be maybe as, ex ex as explicit as I'm going to law school because, but Make sure that while you're telling your story, whatever it happens to be, that towards the end, you, however you want to structure it, just make sure to mention why you're going to law school, why you want to do this, and uh, so that the admissions uh, council like knows what exactly you're all about. <laughs> I do want to say for the diversity statement, also just because I wrote about race, it's not what the diversity statement has to be. I know a, one of my really good friends, um, he sent me both of his as examples and. For his diversity statement, he talked about um, growing up in a single family household um, and how he was helping, uh, or single, you know, single parent household, uh, and that was kind of how he brought that in and how that <laughs> shaped him. So uh, I think it's, again, it's just like, what's that one little thing that makes you unique yeah. that maybe you didn't get to put into your actual personal statement? So this is a great question. Do you remember how many weeks, months, did you spend studying for the LSAT? Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, let's yeah. elaborate on that. I, uh, <laughs> I, I'll make another shameless plug, plug for my blog because I wrote about that as well. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, I started, I took like one, so I planned on taking the June 2017 LSAT. Um, so I took like a casual sort of practice this summer before that. And then I really started practicing in earnest uh, during winter break immediately before uh, I was going to take the real set. So that would be the winter of 2016 into 17. That's really when I started picking it up. And then I kind of carried it through a little bit through the spring. And then I, uh, then May and then into June of 2017 is when I picked it up. So I guess really in earnest about, about six months, um, six or seven months. Yeah, I started in January of my junior year with plans to take the June LSAT and then to start applying that next fall. Um, so I studied from January to May and then the June LSAT. Ended up taking a year off actually to um, just make sure that law school was exactly what I wanted to do. Um, it was a really great experience. And uh, then I studied for another like four months after that once um, I realized that I didn't want to go and I was serious about it. So I'd say 10 months, almost a year for me. Mine is pretty similar um, because I did the same thing. So yeah. I studied during my junior year, and I also was gonna yeah. I took the June LSAT, and then I took a year off, and then I went back yeah. in this past year and did August to December, and then took the December LSAT. Yeah, I loved doing that too. Right. Yeah, I studied. Um, I studied on my own for about three months, and then I realized I. I, you know, I took a little bit of a break and I realized I kind of needed some extra push. So that's when I took my class, which was about five months. So yeah, in, you know, in total eight months probably. Okay. So what do you believe sets Chicago's legal market apart from other big legal markets like New York and DC? Yeah. This is actually our final, uh, final question. Okay. Um, well, I mean, besides size, obviously it matches up with like New York, LA. Yeah, it's um, one of the biggest, one of the top five. It's very comparable in that way. Um, I mean, for me, it's I'm very biased because I have a lot of family up here. Um, if you don't, um, Chicago, Kent in particular, has a very strong local network. Um, I'm sure you could say that about a, a lot of uh, schools in different regions in New York, LA, Chicago, really any city. Uh, smaller schools will tend to have stronger local networks. Um, Chicago Kent has a rather large local network in Chicago. So that's a, that's a big thing. 
um, that they have going through here. And we also have our nice Midwestern charm. So. <laughs> I think I think for me, because I'm out of state and totally out of region too. Um, for me, the biggest push to come to Chicago was the city is beautiful. Uh, the Midwestern people or yeah. Mideastern people are really nice. Um, I really wanted to do environmental work, and I thought that there was a really good community. A lot of law opportunities in Chicago, kind of like New York and LA, it's one of the top five biggest cities in the country. Um, it's right downtown. There's like a law office across the street from <laughs> Chicago Kent. So like there are law offices everywhere. There's a ton of networking opportunities because you are downtown. So lawyers can come over here or have a bunch of uh, events that they hold, or you can go after class to events at law firms. The networking opportunities are unbelievable. So. For me, that was huge. Yeah, I think so. I, I'm I, I'm from Chicago area, so I'm very biased to Chicago. But I I always think of Chicago. I I've uh, you know I've been to New York. I did a semester in D.C. So um, I always think that you know in terms of the law realm here, we are so friendly and we are a manageable size city. So Chicago is awesome because it is a huge city. You, every sort of law that you want to do, you will be able to find here. Um, it's just, it is a little bit more manageable and especially at a place like Kent that we have so many connections where, you know, I, I, I went to an event yesterday where there were lawyers from every single sort of, um, you know, law industry that I could think of. Um, and we are, you know, again, big, but small enough where they all kind of know each other and they're all so helpful in terms of, you know, maybe I don't want to do personal injury, but they have friends that do criminal and they can send me in this direction or that. So I, I do think it's just a great place to have here. Also, rent in Chicago is pretty under control, so that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> compared, to most cities, compared, sure. compared to New York and LA, yeah. it's definitely got the leg up there and it's laid out really nicely. Yeah, un un system. Unlike, say, New York, which is just a jumbled mess of roads and, <laughs> and subways that lead to nowhere. And like, Chicago, Chicago is very well laid out, so it's good for commuting students as well. Yeah, it's a huge city. One of the things for me was I was nervous, like, oh, some law schools are on college campuses and they're like, well, Kent's not really a campus, it's a building, but you get the entire city of Chicago as your campus, which is unbelievable to have the opportunity to be however old you are living in a magnificent city such as Chicago. That was super cool and it still is really cool for me. At least. Well, thank you for your, for your, um, you know, your insight for our, um, for our attendees today. We've reached the end of time for our webinar. So we appreciate you joining us today um, for our presentation. Um, if there are additional questions that you have for us, um, please uh, email us or contact the Office of Admissions at admissions at kentlaw.iit.edu. We look forward to speaking with you further about the program. Thank you again for joining us. Have a wonderful evening.